Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial on Unity and Shader Graph. In this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create a material and a script to have the Fortnite effect when you hit any wall. So it's like this. Depending on where you click, the mesh bends and then it damps out. I also have a tutorial about these two fountains also made in Shader Graph if you would like to, to watch them they are they are in the, the channel so let's jump into it so here we are in a new scene I'm using um, the lightweight render pipeline you can use uh, the, the HD as well it's the same pr process um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shader BBR shader graph and let's let's call it Fortnite and let's open it and here we have it um, so you have this position input which is relatively new um, and you can if you change that this is the position of each vertice of the whole mesh so you can add or subtract any of that and the, the mesh itself will will change in the shape so we are going to start by adding a time and then we will multiply this by the speed that we want which is going to be accessed outside and then this is going through the sign function which goes between if we put the speed to be 1 it goes between uh, minus 1 and 1 by the passing of time we need to multiply this number by a vector 3 which is going to be the direction in which the mesh will be moving. So we will add a vector 3 and call it direction, throw it in here and normalize it. And like this if you apply it you will see that the, the, the whole mesh is moving a lot. So you need to uh, multiply it by some small number to reduce that so I found that 0.1 is fine and then we can multiply the resulting vector with this number and then we can get the position of the vertices in object space and add these two together and supply this to the position let's see what, what will happen now so let's create a material out of this shader and let's apply it to this guy. You see that it disappeared because we didn't specify direction, let's put it as one and now you can see that the whole mesh is moving in that direction forward and backwards. You can see that the shadows are not moving that's because the direction light is baked so you can just switch it to real time and and here you can see it, it's in real time okay so let's let's do it such that it affects only a small area of, of the mesh so for that we need to define a vector 3 which is a point where, where in that point it's maximum movement and then it decreases until it fades out so let's create a vector 3, let's call it point of 
append and let's throw it here and this point is going to represent the world position of, of, of this point that we are talking about that is gonna move so we will get the distance between this point and each point of the mesh so the position of the mesh but in world position in world space sorry so we want to get the distance between these two so the resulting of this distance is zero in exactly the point of bend and then it increases by going further from that point so then we need to connect this to a subtract to the B of the subtract and then the A is going to be the area of bend how much space do we want to be bended from the mesh let's default it to 1 and in this way we will get values less than 0 and I will show you how, it, how will it look like so now we will multiply what we have already let's connect it to this one with this and connect it to the add instead let's save this and let's check it out so the area of bend is high in, in this case so we can turn it down or actually it is low so now you can see at this place it is moving correctly but the rest are, are going in the opposite way which is why we don't want zero values which uh, which means that we just need needs to clamp this so connect it to the in and then the minimum is going to be zero the maximum is going to be how much pointiness of the mesh we do we want so let's connect this and check this out so you can see now nothing is going the other way so now the point of bend is somewhere maybe around here or something to, to get it here just for testing purposes let's create an, a new empty object and make sure it's not under any other object and well, let's reset that and let's bring it to the place that we want okay that's good now you can copy these values and throw them in here so now the point of bend is here and we can see the stretch area is still big so we can reduce it and uh, let's increase the speed more so now this is the area of bend and you can see this is completely static and the direction on x so you can actually um, for some reason when you put everything to zero the, the mesh disappears but once you change anything you can see so like this it's on the y and you can go for the y and the z for example together which will look funny so you can do multiple things using that so now the only thing left is to create a script where wherever you click you will have the point of bend in that place that you clicked on and to damp out this uh, bounciness 
so at this point we need to create a variable that controls how much stretch do we want that's easy so create a bit of one for the stretch and multiply it by this value and connect it here this default to one save so then you can increase the stretch and you can see how much it's going in and out Oops, you can go crazy with that I think we need more speed even more yeah that looks good so now the only thing that we want is to in runtime when you click somewhere this point of bend is in that place that you clicked and it damp the, the stretch damps out so let's go ahead and create a new script let's call it bend on click define a public material for our material and let's define some floats um, damping speed let's put it equal to 0 0.02 and stretch distance let's put that to 2 and we need a private one called stretch I'll show you why and okay so we don't need the start method here what we will do is if input dot mouse button down zero so basically if the user clicks the left button of the mouse then we want to, to do ray casting so let's define a ray cast hit and let's define a ray which is going to be the ray from the camera uh, in the position of the mouse camera main screen point to ray and then the point is going to be input dot mouse position and then after that we will say if physics dot raycast and then the ray and out it then we want to set the vector set vector for the material uh, the property is going to be the point of bend we didn't name these so we will name them now in the material and it's going to be hit dot point which is the place that the user clicked on and the stretch is going to equal stretch distance and then outside every frame we will want the stretch to be equals math f dot clamp uh, stretch and then the minimum is zero we don't want it to go 
below zero and the maximum is any number which is uh, big um, so uh, of course it's not gonna be only stretch we are gonna subtract the dam <coughs> we are going so of course it's not only the stretch we are going to subtract the damping speed from that so every frame the stretch is going to go down until it reaches zero and we're gonna say material dot set float and it's gonna be the stretch and it's going to equal the stretch variable okay so now we only need to name these two variables in the material so let's go back so it's the point of bend and you can change names in this reference point of bend and we want to change the stretch as well underscore stretch and let's save that let's go back in here and of course we need a collider on this and let's set the material as well so let's go ahead and add a box collider and let's check the bounds to be here so let's get the camera closer line with view and let's test this out And here you have it. Of course, the uh, the direction we changed that. So let's put it back, and it's going to be on the z axis one, and on the x zero. Of course, you can have all the fancy stuff. You can add whatever texture you want. out, connect it to the albedo, save and you can and choose whatever texture you want and here you have it so thank you everyone for watching and remember to leave a subscribe and a like on this video and watch the other videos if you like it.